Good morning and welcome to Trinity on Easter 5. Glad you're joining us. Would you stand for worship? Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, Amen. A reading from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before his shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here's water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, The spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way, rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, 
he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 22, beginning at verse 24. We'll read responsively by half verse. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He who removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be pleasing to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Trinity. Several years ago, an article was put out by Dr. Lamont Sanaya, professor of missions and world Christianity at Yale Divinity School. And he wrote a book several years back that talked about the rise of Christianity in Africa. You see, in the 1900s, there were only 9 million Christians in Africa. And today, there's over 380 million. 100 years ago, Africa was only 9% Christian. Today, 50% Christian. And it's growing 7 to 10 times faster than any other religion. 4 times faster than Islam. You see, there are more than 30 million Anglican Christians in Nigeria and Uganda alone, and only two million, to give some context, in the United States. Well, the question I have is, why is that? And Professor Sion says, the old tribal religions of Africa provided rules that rewarded good behavior and punished bad, but it could not help humans change. You see, that is the difference with Christianity. It does not demand good behavior. Why? Because Christianity made Africans renewed Africans, not remade Europeans. And that is what is happening in the story above. The Ethiopian did not become a remade Jew. He became a renewed African. That's what the gospel does. You see, God built his kingdom, and he did it through people like Philip who was available. Philip, he was present, and he showed love to this wonderful man, this Ethiopian. So who was the Ethiopian, perhaps you're asking? He was a man who was castrated in order to serve his whole life in the court of Ethiopia for the queen. Begs to ask why. What was he searching for? What was missing in his life? What did he think he would fulfill in his heart by going to such extremes? He was a Gentile. Keep in mind that for later. He was a worshiper of Yahweh. Not uncommon. Gentiles often visited the temple in Jerusalem, sometimes as worshipers of Yahweh, sometimes if they were powerful or if they represented the powerful, they would go to Jerusalem as a sort of diplomatic mission. Perhaps that's why he was there, only to find that he wasn't welcome. He had great power, though, and influence. He was in charge of the wealth of the queen of the nation that was blessed with massive natural resources and trade. And the Holy Spirit was at work in this man's heart, drawing him to himself and into his family and into the kingdom. He was a sheep, it was one of those other sheep, as we talked about last week, that God was singing the tune to woo his heart back to himself. This guy was actually seeking after God, and no one seeks after God whom God has not chosen to be his own. And he had a question. What is God like? 
Who am I? I've given my life to the service of the queen. I'm dedicated and I've done a good job. And I've climbed the ranks because I'm a hard worker. I've done my best to worship and honor the God of Israel. Is that enough for God to notice me? Have I done enough to earn his love? Am I good enough to be accepted into his kingdom? And as he was riding along, he was reading Isaiah 53, verses 7 through 8. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its she shear in silent, he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Who was the lamb? Who was led to the slaughter, he might be thinking. And that's exactly when God sends his good news messenger, Philip. So who is Philip? Not Philip the apostle. This is Philip the evangelist, or Philip the deacon, if you will. He was one of the original seven deacons selected to serve in the church in Jerusalem, according to Acts 6, verse 5. He had four daughters who prophesied in the early, early church. And when the great persecution arose in Acts 8, verse 1, Philip left Jerusalem to become an evangelist in the region of Samaria. That's when God sent Philip on a strange, dangerous mission. Rise, he said, and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert place. And he arose and he went. This was a strange command from the Lord. And it was a dangerous command too. But God was at work lovingly building his family. And he graciously chose to involve Philip in his work. Philip's response was he arose and went. He trusted God and he said yes to him. Didn't ask why or how. Reasonable question, by the way. He just went. And God was using his faithful people to bring the good news of Jesus to all the ends of the earth. And so Philip went in the middle of nowhere to find an Ethiopian in his chariot riding along and reading from Isaiah. And Philip saddled up in the chariot basically beside him. And he simply said, do you want some gray poupon? <laughs> no, he didn't. He simply said, hey man, you have a question? He didn't have to give him a can spill or a sales pitch or a theological debate. No, he just simply said, do you have a question? Can I help you understand what you're reading? And the Ethiopian said, as a matter of fact, I do. Can you help me understand what's being said here? I don't quite get it. And then Philip opened his mouth and began to with the scriptures, he told him the good news about Jesus. Philip told him the good news about the Lamb who was slain, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He told him about Jesus, God the Son in human flesh, the innocent one who lived the perfect, righteous life for, his, for us in our place. He told him how Jesus, the righteous one, silently, willingly, and unjustly, yet mercifully, suffered, bled, even died. He died in our place. He took away all of our punishment, and he put it on himself, and he paid the price for our sin so that we would have his forgiveness and his righteousness. Perhaps the eunuch also had been reading Isaiah 56, or maybe Philip read him Isaiah 56. It would be unusual for him just to have one part of Isaiah. Surely he had seen this, or Philip pointed it out. Isaiah 56 reads, This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the one who does this, the person who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without disgrading it, and keeps their hands from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. 
But this is what the Lord says to the eunuch who keeps the Sabbath, who chooses what pleases me and beholds fast to my covenant. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever. That must have been music to his ears. For his dry bones, it must have brought hope good news about Jesus was for him. Philip just connected the dots. That's all he did. He literally took this Ethiopian's hands and placed them in the hands of Jesus and watched him do his supernatural work. And when he heard the good news about Jesus, the Spirit said he was so moved, he said, stop the chariots. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here's some water. What prevents me, Philip, from being baptized? And he commanded the chariots to stop. And they both went down into the water, and Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And and through the simple water, God washed this man's sins away, adopted him into his family. Now get this. One of the first Gentiles who was adopted into the family of God was a black African. And not only that, this was the beginning of the church in Ethiopia, a church that had great influence in bringing the gospel of Jesus to Africa, and a church that's still around today, one of the oldest churches in the world, thus making the continent of Africa the most Christian continent in all the world, as we spoke about at the beginning. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation... God's love and mercy and forgiveness is boundless, my friend. God did not cut this man off, but lovingly and mercifully brought him in and gave him an everlasting name. Beloved, son, forgiven, redeemed. You are now my friend, he says. And the eunuch went back to his country rejoicing as a beloved, forgiven child of God. A question for you. Do you have questions for God? Do you ever question whether He loves you or has forgiven you or His mercies for you? Friends, He didn't come to argue with you or to sell you a bill of goods. He didn't come to correct you or fix you or put you in your place. He didn't come to cut you off. He came to love you, to forgive you, to welcome you home. Come home, friends home. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that we've heard God's good news message, that the gospel is for everyone, for all, I invite you to stand and let's together profess what we know to be true through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. 
Jesus, you are the vine, and we are your branches. Keep us abiding in your life and love. Prune and tend your church so that it may bear fruitful disciples of your grace. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Jesus, the Ethiopian officials sought to understand your good news. Expand the hearts and minds of all in authority to pursue truth and justice. Bring reason for all people to justice. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Jesus, your love sets our hearts ablaze. Open the hearts of all people to reflect this love in ways that nurture and foster character. Strengthen all who support parenting and provide guidance for the young. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Jesus, your love precedes us, and we respond with adoration and praise. Give to all who are afflicted grace to bathe in this affection. Raise us to delight in your loving purposes through good times and bad. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Jesus, we are made for your love. Do not forget the children you have made. May we all come to abide with you forever. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Jesus, in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of Emmanuel Beckford Parish in Woodstock, Grace and Holy Trinity, Richmond, Emmanuel on the Hill, Alexandria, and St. Andrew's Beckford Parish in Mount Jackson. In our prayers for the worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of Bangladesh. In our weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for the ministry and outreach partners, Tree of Life Ministries, and the Shelton family. In our prayers for Trinity Ministries, we pray for worship ministers, chalice bearers and acolytes, and Trinity kids, and for our Sunday school program. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Lord God, may our prayers rising before you like incense be pleasing to you, and may our outstretched hands be filled with your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, forgive you through Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet each other in peace. Well, good morning. I'm so glad you're joining us on the virtual service. Welcome to Trinity. If it's your first time. I hope you enjoyed the service. Do me a favor. Send me an email. You can follow the prompt here on the screen and simply let me know that you joined us on the virtual service. Maybe let me know how I can pray for you and let me know how I can better serve you as a priest here in this church, because why, Trinity, there's a place for you, even if you watch virtually. A couple of announcements. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have our annual Hunt Country Stable Tours. It's back after a four and a half year hiatus. We're so glad to be kicking it off again. I hope that you'll join us live for that event. It's a self-guided tour that goes to about 12 to 15 different properties and venues. If you want more information, simply click on the prompt here and check it out. Perhaps buy a ticket and join us for such a great opportunity. And then I invite you to check out our website, see all the different things happening here in our parish over the next several weeks. Lots of activities, lots of activities, and I would like for you to be a part of as many of them as possible. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we come to this table where Jesus reminds us every week that we are in, that we are accepted, that he loves us and he likes us and he invites us into his family to be children 
And he feeds us a meal of himself, reminding us that we are forgiven. Come to his table knowing that you are loved, and it's a place called home. I invite you to also consider giving to Trinity if you'd like to. You can simply follow the prompts here on the screen, remembering the words of Jesus who said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Come to the table. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us the everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, 
And above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him. You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country, where we, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. are the gifts of God, for you the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Join me in our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, 
We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.